Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, good morning, and welcome to our Monday morning devotion, the 30th day of March, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 20. 20. It is my hope that you have woken up well and that you are ready to start this new day and this new week. As always, my prayers always with you. I know it is a bit early in the morning. Some of you have not woken up, but I want us always, as the Lord lives, we can be starting our day in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, allow me now to share with you the gospel of the day. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, Verses 1 to 11. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in their midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law of Moses, commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his figure on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his figure on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away. One by one, gaining, uh, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. The Gospel of our Lord. Today, St. John is giving us the reason why we need to rethink forgiveness. I know sometimes last week I did give a reflection on forgiveness, but that we, we can be able to pick it up as we continue with this short morning reflection. 
Once upon a time, there lived a priest, a priest who was really loved by the people. But this priest was grieving because deep in his heart, he was at pains. Why was he paining? Because he had committed a sin long ago when he was a young seminarian. And he was feeling very devastated and the sense of God's forgiveness never was with him. And therefore every day he would wake up to actually agonize about the sin that he committed and even asking himself, did God really forgive me? Now one day he was transferred to a certain parish. In that parish, there was a woman who claimed to have visions and in her visions, she would speak with Jesus. So one day, though skeptical, the priest called the woman and asked her, Madam, I hear that you speak with Jesus in visions. Jesus said, Yes, I do. He appears to me and we speak and he gives me messages. Well, do this. The next time he appears, ask him which sin I committed when I was a young seminarian. And the woman said, yes, father, I will do that. After some few days, uh, the priest saw that woman and called her. <clears throat> Madam, did Jesus come? Yes, we met. Did he talk to you? Yes, he talked to me. Uh, did you ask him about the sin I committed? Yes, I asked him. Uh, what did he say? Uh, he said, I can't remember. What God forgives, forgets. And you can see, you can, you can see how relieved the priest was. And that has a lesson for us. And I want to speak this early morning to somebody maybe who did something and maybe you feel devastated. It's as if God has not forgiven you. I have always said, and I want you to carry this message home today, that there is no sin, however grave, that surpasses divine clemency. There is no sin, however grave, that surpasses divine clemency. I always say <clears throat> that God never gets ashamed of our sins. We too should never get ashamed. Let us go to Jesus. But now, there is another angle to today's story. And this angle is about the others, if you like, the accusers. Now, long time ago, in the 18th century, during the time of King Hammurabi, there was a code of law, 18th century BC. It was called the Hammurabi Code. The Hammurabi Code stipulated that the adulterous woman should be stoned. The Jewish code later and the Roman law uh, stipulated that both should be killed. The Quran stipulated that uh, the adulterers should be both be punished, each a hundred lashes. Now, later the Jewish code was categorical that uh, all of them should be executed. This is found in the book of Leviticus, I think, chapter 20. Now, the people who are accusing this woman they are coming from somewhere, historically speaking. But remember, they have brought the woman alone. The man was not brought. So the, again now, here we can see some bit of cultural bias. Because it is the woman who has been brought, but uh, experience has it that she couldn't have been alone. And this is why today I won't talk about why it is so easy to blame others or to point figures at others and why we should not do that. Reason number one why it is so easy to point figures at others. First, it is because it's very easy. To say so and so did it, aye, it is so easy. So we always do it. And if you can even listen to us as a nation, we are a blaming nation. Every person who did this, the other one did the other thing. Number two, it's fun. 
to point figures at others, it's fun. We say, okay, after all, it's not me, somebody else did. Reason number three, accepting responsibility and feeling hard is very bad. I'm saying accepting responsibility and feeling bad is hard. So we don't want to accept responsibility. Look at our kids. You know, you listen to your small boy going out there to play, then coming back. Eh, mommy, uh, Mike has punked me. Mike has punked you. Why? Nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> this tiny fellow will not say that they did something to deserve some punishment. Because they do not want to accept responsibility. The same happens to their moms and dads. I'm sure there is somebody listening to me today who is actually pointing figures at others. Even in marriages, when things are not working, it is because of you. At work, it's because of you. We don't want to take responsibility. In the Christian teaching, we must accept to take responsibility. Reason number four. We have been taught all our lives to blame. To blame. That's what we have been taught. To blame others. It is it's like something that is in our, in, our, in our bones. Not even blood. Because blood can be transfused. Bones can't. If you like, it could be our pathological ailment. Number five. We use ourselves as standards. Now that is so wrong. We blame others because we think that we are the best. We blame others because we believe and we think that we are perfect. Anybody else is wrong apart from myself. I can't be wrong because I am the standard. That is wrong. That is wrong. We cannot go about life thinking that we are the best human persons and the others are, as it were, scraps of humanity. Reason number six, it's hard to fully accept that we are different from others. My dear friend, we are unique human persons. There is nobody who existed in history who looked like you. It is only you. There has never been and there will never be another person who is like you. Therefore, because we are so different, that is why even we act differently. So, it is easy to do that because we do not appreciate the fact that uh, I am different from John, John is different from Grace, Grace is different from Peterson, like that. So, when having said all that, reason number seven, it is animals, it is uh, animals nature to bite back. It is animals' nature to bite back. So are we the persons who are biting back every other time? Today, my dear friend, we are being reminded that each one of us has sinned. It is time to go to God as persons. If you can see somebody else is on the wrong, please pray for them. Don't kill them through your gossip. If you yourself, you are somewhere stuck as a person, Maybe you did a certain sin in the past and you have tried to, to go for confession. You've gone for confession. You are even doubting, did God forgive me? My dear, this great day, I want you to know that God has forgiven you. He forgives and forgets. Finally, there is no sin, however grave, that surpasses divine clemency. Thank you. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessings of your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upwards towards you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, do have 
a productive Monday. Asante sana. Thank you.